Well, it's good to be back. The Borderland Blitz. Sponsored, We're back. Yeah, sponsored by Southwest University. Nine, nine months ago, we said goodbye, and here we are to say hello, or should I say cheers? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's always cheers in my book, always. Yeah, I'm Adrian Ochoa, joined by the one and only Rachel Phillips. Uh, Rachel, here we go, high school football in Texas. How are you feeling about, like, the, the environment? Oh, I'm feeling great. I was at two games tonight. It was a ton of fun, a lot of a lot of heat in both of those games. I can't wait to show you them, but just the whole night, Texas high school football, it's back and it feels good. Yeah, we're feeling good here. So let's go ahead and get to our starting lineup. A good slate of games for week one. Our game of the week will take us to the Field of Dreams in Las Cruces for an I-10 showdown as Franklin took on Centennial. We'll then bring it back to Kenyon Thiel where the Eagles played host to the Spartans of Pebble Hills. And then later, a matchup for Lower Valley bragging rights as the Riverside Rangers took on the Isleta Indians to quote the Black Eyed Peas. Yes. Let's get it started in here. Yeah, with an El Paso versus Las Cruces matchups. The Franklin Cougars hit the road to the Field of Dreams to take on the Centennial Hawks. Centennial coming off a major win last week, taking down the number one ranked team in the state of New Mexico, that being Rio Rancho Cleveland. As a result, Centennial moved up to the number one spot this week. So Franklin's first game of the season out of the gate, they got to face the number one team yeah. in the land of enchantment. Just a little bit of a tough one there. It's tonight's game of the week. Again, these are always fun to watch. The Cougs, though, they had a nice resume as well. The champs of District 16A last season, looking to start the year with the win in the first half. It was all Centennial, though. Braden Stevens passes to Zane Baca. That made it 35-7 Centennial. But Franklin not going down without a fight here. Shea Smith connects with Bo Sparks, 35-14. to That would be the halftime score. We go to the fourth quarter again. Centennial just continued to pile it on the Cougars, showing again why they're the number one team in the state of New Mexico right here. This is David Hernandez with the quarterback keeper. And he'll just true. take care of the rest as the Centennial Hawks go on to win this one by a final score. Pull it up. It's 49 to 21. Centennial now 2 and 0 in the land of enchantment right now. Uh, I think in the first half, offensively, we played real well. Defensively, we got some stops. Second half, we got uh, we, we, we got the pick. Or not the pick, but the uh, we got two turnovers in the second half, which really helped. Um, we, we got the, uh, the, the strip for a touchdown was really big, and we really weren't playing well offensively in the second half. I was disappointed with that. But, um, you know, our, our kids fought, and I was proud of, I'm proud of them. Thank you very much. The Centennial Hawks continue to ride high. Yeah, they might yeah. just be the team to beat in the land yeah. of enchantment. Well, next head, though, to El Paso. So, Canatillo, the Eagles made it to the Sweet 16 of the state playoffs last season, and they're looking to build off that success, but they had a uh, pretty tough matchup in Week 1 against Pebble Hill Spartans, a team that could be a big contender this season. Let's head to the Blue Turf in Canatillo. They're up 7-0 on the kickoff return. It's Brandon Cardenas for the Spartans, and he would take it. Keep running, Brandon. You got this, my man. Let's go. Does he get there? Yes, he... Oh, cool. Almost. Almost there. Wow. I was about to say yes, he will, but he doesn't. <laughs> he gets taken down inside the 10-yard line. A couple plays later. The handoff to Zarian Quarles. He'll take it in, though. Don't worry. 14 to nil. Pebble Hill Spuns. Canatillo looking to get back on the board here. They need to make something happen. The big defensive play. They get to the quarterback, Abel Gallardo Pereira's with the sack there. Spartans with a big play now. They just keep on going. They launch it downfield, and it's Jayla Boss with the big grab. He, though, gets injured on the play. A little bit of concern yeah, there for him with the there. shoulder. Yeah. A few plays later, Spartans will cash in on that. Zero and Quarles once again with the house call. In he goes to end zone. Pebble Hills, like I said, a team that you will want to watch this season, beating Canatillo 23 to nil, a team that made it all the way to the Sweet 16 last year. An impressive win by those Spartans in a shutout. We go to Central El Paso next. Coronado taking on Chapin, this game being played at Austin High. The Thunderbirds have a new head coach in Mike Price, so he was hoping to get the T-Birds started off on the right foot. Huskies coming off a playoff win a season ago. First possession here. Throws to Coronado's Blake Randick for a 65-yard pick six. Nothing gets better than a pick six. That is pretty. Good. It's seven to nothing, Coronado. After a missed field goal by Chapin once again, this is Blake Randick for a 30-yard touchdown pass by Owen Levesky. Double it for the Thunderbirds. They're up 14 to nil. Second quarter now. Chapin's Evan Rivera as we get a shot of the dance team, Coronado dance team. Whoa. And a zoom in scoreboard. I this love is a, that. This is a David Moreno. Yeah, 100%. He loves the zoom. rack focus, and we love him for it. Check out this toe tap right Ooh. there. Nice play. Yeah, and he's giving it to him, too. He's like, yep, I got Savion it. Savion Jordan. 
Next play, Rivera mishandles a snap, nicely recovers and tosses a 10-yard pass to an all-alone Jose Solario. 14-6, the Huskies cut into the Thunderbirds' lead. And check out this next crazy play with three seconds left in the half. Corner out of the sights, go for a field goal, but it gets blocked. Blake Randig, though, wide, he holds it, picks up the loose ball, and instead he runs it in for the third score of the day, the hat trick. 24-6, just when things looked like they were going downhill, the Coronado Thunderbirds take it back uphill. It's the Thunderbirds start off on the winning track. 34-20 to 20 was the final good win for Mike Price. It's first season with Coronado. We had an afternoon game over at the SAC. The Midland Bulldogs paying a visit to El Paso to take on the Montwood Rams. Midland QB, Strowman Bridges, handoff to Mackie McCoy, and he just takes it all the way to the house. The Rams trying to get there, but just couldn't. Montwood QB, Isaac Galvin, though, the pass to Gio Barrera, and he'll take this one for the touchdown. Look, look at those strides he's putting in there. That's a fast kid right there. Look for him to make some moves as the season goes on. But Midland would just cruise for the rest of this one. Jake Cunningham passed to Stroman Bridges. Again for another touchdown for Bridges. And then Midland, Stroman Bridges, he's going to get in again. He gets the handoff. Yeah, yeah, to Mackie McCoy, who got the first touchdown there. It was all Midland. They get the win over Montwood, 56-28. to 28. Well, the Rams are hoping that this is the season that they return to the playoffs and will shift gears to another 1-6-A team that, despite finishing fourth in District 1-6-A, had an incredible run to the Sweet 16 of the 6-A playoffs last season, and that would be the Eastwood Troopers. Head coach Julio Lopez isn't afraid to test his team against some of the best opponents in the state, which is why the Troop hit the road to the Dallas-Fort Worth area to take on the South Lake Carroll Dragons, a team that only lost one game last season, and that was in the playoffs. The Dragons went 14-1, and so how would the Troopers fare in this one? Well, in the fourth First quarter here. Go Troop! Evan Minjares is going to send this one via airmail to Curtis Murillo. And Curtis Murillo, welcome to End Zone City. The Troopers take the lead 7-3. to three. But the Dragons going to answer right back on the ensuing kickoff. Jacob Jordan going to take it to the outside and turn on the Jets down the sideline for the house call. The Dragons go back on top, 10-3. to three. Unfortunately, it only got worse from there for the Troopers. Still in the first, the handoff to Owen Allen. He's going to punch his way in to tack on six more. That made it 17-7, South Lake Carroll. Then in the second, it's Allen again from three yards out. Same result. The Troopers knew this would be a tough game, but the hope is that playing a team like South Lake Carroll will better prepare them for district play. Remember, they only play two non-district games this season with how stacked 1-6-A is this season, but there you see it, the Dragons all over the Troopers tonight. 66-14 to was the final. That's though, a very yeah, smart move by Coach Lopez, because... though, getting them prepped for the season ahead. Score of Bulldogs, though, were also on the road tonight. They were in Lubbock, taking on the Lubbock High. Westerners, second quarter, Lubbock High up 30-0, and Britto Willie just saw there, tacked on another six. He strolls into the end zone. 19 to nil, then Socorro hoping to make things happen, but they come up short and they have to punt. Figueres has other plans. He took down the punter there. Later, it's Lubbock's Kyla Petrowski looking deep to the end zone. Trini Tahirna up over two defenders and comes down for the score. That is smooth. And yeah, he's got the smooth dance moves to match it. Not a good start for Socorro's new head coach, Edward Cano. The Bulldogs for 14-1 to 8. It's always tough heading up to Lubbock and having to play those Lubbock schools as well. Well, back to the Sun City Parkland High. The Matadors have a new head coach as well, Lee McWhorter. Parkland made the playoffs last year as well. They were looking for some good, good things in 2022. They hosted El Dorado tonight. The Aztec now back in District 16A. There you see in the third quarter, Parkland, Quincy Estrada connects with Evan Garcia, who dives in for the go-ahead score. It's, it's 14-13 to 13 Aztecs with the one-point lead. Next possession for the Matadors, Eric Ortiz hands to Jason Johnson, who scamps, scampers in for the five-yard. Touchdown that made it 20. Oh, they got the flash of lights out there. I love it. All these little schools seem to, the YSD schools seem to have those flashing lights. It's pretty cool. Next possession for the Aztecs, Quincy Estrada goes for the long ball. Unfortunately, it gets picked off by Ooh. Parkland's Eric Gallegos. He's not done yet. He's going to return it 45 yards. Wow. Juice. There it is. Finally gets taken down. Next play for the Matadors. As we get a shot of the drum line here. Always nice. Love the drum line. Next play for the Matadors. Quarterback Eric Ortiz. Going to lay it up to Isaac Peralta, who oh, takes the hit here. He gets injured on that play, gets shaken up, but he would walk off on his own accord there, taking the Matadors, though, to a 26-14 lead in the third quarter. Final score, though, Del Valle 
gets the dub in this one, their first win of the season, 35 to 27, the final as we look at some color bars right there. <laughs> a battle for Lower Valley bragging rights. It's Isleta yep. versus Riverside. Who would take out the bragging rights? I was out there and it was, yeah, was a lot of fun, it looked like. A lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, I got given a burger. I had a lot of people come up to me in cowboys hats. It was a good time. <laughs> they wanted to start their 22 campaign on the right note. The Rangers made to the Sweet 16 of the 4A playoffs a season ago, but could they continue that momentum against a Isleta squad who also was looking to start the season with a win? The pride of the Lower Valley on the line. The Cowboy Hats in full swing, the, the finger guns rights. up, and Riverside wanted to give East Letter the boot. I think a pick six goes down that line. Evan Martinez looking for one of his guys, but instead finds his opposite number in Angel Munoz, who snaps it off and puts on the Jets, proving why he's called Speedy. speedy and he speedy. is hyped about it so much so that he goes oh. too extensive with Careful. the celebration. Yeah, Speedy, they need you. Come on, man. But he's hyped up, and so is this cheerleader. I mean, come on. Oh, the Cowboy man. Hat. The cartwheel. Yeah, Whoa. come on now. <laughs> and the Rangers didn't let up. East Letter forced a punt, and the snap goes over the head. Rangers ball, and this time Speedy with the handoff to his other half in Jose Guadado, and it's a Rangers TD. My mom up there taking hey. it all in. Riverside High School football. She does have a Coke Zero in hand, though. I mean, mom, <laughs> come on, do better. We're Diet Coke people. <laughs> Rangers though, doing great. Speedy showing he can do it all. Throws it up only to find his other half in Jose Guardado again. The clean take, and he just strolls on in for a second TD of the night. What a ruthless combo those two are. They go on to dominate the Lower Valley and win it, although, you know, it was a little touch and go there towards the end. We can bring up that final score here. Yeah, let's take a look at that final. Riverside looking good today. There it is. 56 to 42, close, but uh, Riverside getting the win in the Battle of the Lower Valley. Great start for Gary Recorder and the Rangers. He always has them competitive and Looks like it's going to be a good season right now for the Rangers. Well, plenty more to come on the Borderland Blitz. We're just getting started, Rachel. Yeah. This is like a little appetizer for you. Coming up after the break, we'll head on over back to the sack for the doubleheader of the game, which would have, which was East Lake taking on Andrews. We'll also stop by Conquest Stadium as the Valle Conquistadores played host to the Burgess. We'll also have the return of one of our favorite segments. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's coming up right after this break. And it's fun. It's a Nissan sales van ad. Now that's something I can commit to. This RAV4 doesn't even have as many standard safety features as this Rogue. Get low APR financing plus no payments for 90 days on Rogue. Love may be forever, but these offers are not. Don't wait until 2023 and enroll today at Southwest University. We offer more than 20 associates and bachelor's degrees to start your dream career now. Enroll by September 23rd at Southwest University to become a professional in the nursing, sonography, business, or radiology fields. We offer flexible schedules and short terms. Why wait until next year when you can start at Southwest University now? For more information, visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Last day to enroll is September 23rd. Southwest University makes you happen. News doesn't stop on weekends, and neither does ABC7. Whether you're an early riser or like to sleep in, ABC7 has more choices than ever to start your Saturday right. Good Morning El Paso is on from 6 to 7. It's GMA weekend from 7 to 8. Good Morning El Paso is back from 8 to 9. Then GMA again from 9 to 10. For weather, traffic, sports, and complete coverage of breaking news, it's Good Morning El Paso and GMA. Saturday mornings from 6 to 10. Santa Teresa drumline laying down some beats for the Blitz. I like so then, it. We should have that as like background music the whole time. Yeah, I love it. absolutely. Well, welcome back to the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. We want to introduce you to a new member of our ABC7 Blitz crew. Uh, no stranger, though, to ABC7. This is Jason, Jason McNabb. How are you, Jason? Good. How are you, Adrian? Doing well. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, it's funny. I've been here since May, and I never even had a proper introduction as a reporter. <laughs> oh, now so, you get it. You know. Now you get it. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, can't, can't be more thrilled to be here, especially as a member of the Blitz crew. So let's go. Yeah. It's the best career to be a part of, I swear. He was out at a couple of games tonight, beginning with two playoff teams from a season ago, that being Burgess and Tawaii. Yeah. So while both of these teams may have been playoff teams last year, it's clear who is more dominant tonight. 
Del Valle was up 28 to nothing at halftime, and that score continued to increase throughout the third quarter. Quickly marching downfield on the first possession of the second half, senior quarterback Damian Diaz throws a go-ahead touchdown. We will have that in a second here to receiver Jonathan Estrada to extend their lead to 34 nothing. There he goes. And here's that play I was talking about. Here is the touchdown. Oh, wow. Oh, right in the end That's zone. some good sight. And, of course, the extra point is going to be good, making the score 35 zip with 727 left in the third. And the fans could not be more ecstatic. Final score, 56 nothing. Vergas gets shut out. Yeah, that's a blowout if I've ever seen one. Wow. So we'll next head to San Elizario. The Eagles hosting the Anthony Wildcats. Anthony strikes first, but this catch being taken at the 25 all the way for six from wide receiver Diego Uscanda. However, throughout this game, penalties Touchdown, really plagued Anthony. both of these teams one, uh, throughout the second quarter Diego with many Uscanda. drive killers and first and tens being turned into first and longs. You can see a flag right there on the ground. <laughs> Another one right here. It's the first uh, week jitters. Yeah, yeah. Really always, trying yeah. to figure it back out. How do I exactly. play this game again? Oh yeah, that's right, I can't do that. Yeah. Now throughout the second half, San Elizario pushed hard by scoring 16 points throughout that second half, but quarterback Diego Flores was strip sacked into the fourth, sealing that dub for Anthony. Final score, 21-16. Oh, I know someone who will not be happy about that. That is one of our interns who, uh, oh, that's right. yeah, Lorenzo, Lorenzo went to San Eli. Yeah, I can see him over there. He's, uh, he's squirming a little. He's seething. <laughs> but a good win for Anthony. They, they also, they too have a new head coach, Coach Elias. So congratulations to him, Anthony. Wildcats getting started. 1-0 are those Wildcats. Well, thank you very much. Thank Jason, you, Jason, we're going to be seeing you later. We got some social media coming up. With, yes, we do. Yeah. Including those Blitz picks. Remember, you can submit your photos to win a Visa $50 gift card. Yeah. $50, $50 people. Yeah. $53. If you, got, if you don't submit them... I mean, I'll take the $50 Visa gift card. So, I mean, up to you. If you want to give me free money, I'll take it. But, I mean, you should want the free money, too. Just take a quick photo, upload it. Yeah. Easy as that. Simple as that. Well, we got the second game over at the Sac region. Yeah, that's exactly right. It was an interesting 5A, 6A matchup, a battle of the birds as the East Lake Falcons took on the Andrews Eagles. Second half, Andrews QB, Elias Duncan, had the keeper right there. East Lake QB, though, Luke Lamar, won, won his own turn. Hand off to Julius Acosta. That would be a TD to East Lake. We try to go for the two-point conversion to tie things up and get the game to 14 apiece. Can they do it here? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh nice. it's a trick, trick play. play. Okay, I'm, that I'm seeing it first. That could be a sweet play of the sweet week nominee the right week there. Nominee, that definitely. was pretty. Eastlake wins it 27 to 14. As we see some backflips from the Eastlake cheerleaders there. Congrats to the Falcons over at Bel Air High School. It was the Highlanders hosting the Irvin Rockets. Both teams looking for a better season in 2022. As you saw right there, Zach Martinez took it to the promised land to put Highlanders up 7-0. More Big Red here. It's Rick Herrera. He'll get the house call for Big Red. And the Highlanders, you know, they were on it as we see some nice sunset Ooh. shots by John McMinn, scene, yeah. our photographer. This is Christopher Davis. Kind of got, got the tail end of that one as he takes it to the house as well. And Zach Martinez, the running back for the Highlanders, just doing it and doing it well as he'll take it in right for another yeah. touchdown. Beller wins big, 56 to 21. The Highlanders, a team that only had two wins last. And again, there's those flashing lights nice. again. I like it. Beller only had two wins last season, but now they get their first one in the first week. So Sun setting on a beautiful night in the borderland, but things are really just getting started on a new high school football season. This plane even trying to get a peek in, and boy, oh boy, you wanted to have one at Hanks first. Bowie, Bowie, sorry, the Bears down 14 to nil. Less than a minute left on the clock before the half. Knight's looking for more and Marcus Protas shapes the throw but just goes himself duking left right puts the arm over the white stripe for the touchdown but then things erupt. Players going off just watch number 25 here on the oh, left side of your oh. screen with the lift and drop. Boom. Things eventually don't, don't settle like down. No, you yeah. don't. Things eventually settle down, but there was some concern for Portas, who was left on the floor during all of this. He was able to get up and walk himself off, so some good signs there. But nine guys being ejected wow. from the game due to that fight. I don't know if the Bowie Bear got the message, though, because he was all smiles once he met his long-lost brother in Blitzy, the Borderland Bear, the newest hey. member of the ABC7 yeah. Borderland Blitzy. Look at them. They're best buds. He didn't oh, wow. even want to let him go. It was like literally a fight getting him back from, from Bowie Bear. Uh, look at him. He wanted well, to run away with him. He loved him. Who else would you want to meet but the Bowie Bear? I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah, it was a great first meeting for him. Well, next, head to Horizon. I'm sure he will not want to meet a Scorpion, though. The Scorpion's looking for another postseason appearance under new head coach, Juan Smith. First half, Horizon QB, Mario Martinez with the keeper. Gets taken down inside the 10-yard line. But Martinez 
This time we're gonna mail, dump it off here. Number 15, Christopher Munoz with the touchdown there. And then this time it's Munoz again coming up after this shot from the Horizon Scorpion cheerleaders. Takes the handoff, he'll just take it up the gut, shaking them off, around the outside, and he'll take it to the house. Christopher Munoz with the quarterback keeper for the touchdown. Unfortunately, though, here for the her for Horizon, you know, Jefferson came back to win this one. This was a close one down the stretch as the Silver Foxes, though, get the win by final score, 21 to 19. They picked it up in the second half. We were there for the first half of this one, and it was all Horizon. Uh, another score to get to here, the Austin Panthers were on the road in Fort Stockton uh, today, and you see it here. They fall in a close one by two points as Fort Stockton takes it by a final of 18 to 16. And uh, here we go now with my favorite part. The return. Up. Yeah, the return after a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic. We have, the, and you see it right here. I don't need to say it. It's yeah. back. The, the, the war of the week has returned. And Rachel, you were the host for this one. You were out at Gazden High School when El Paso was taking on Gazden last night. Yeah, it was a lot of fun out there. It was my first war of the week participating, yeah. obviously, because it's first time back in three years. And uh, look, they went in. You'll yeah. see, and I, I, I do no want to. I do want to say that uh, that one team had a disadvantage, and they still fought very hard. So let's let's take a look at the war of the week for this week. For the first time in three years, the war of the week is back here for the first ever time. For this episode, we've got Gadsden versus El Paso. Guys, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that an actual yes? Yeah. All right, three. Two, one, go! They went off early. Gadsden has an early lead, but El Paso trying to fight back right now. Gadsden digging the boots. This is the dancers versus the cheer team. El Paso getting an early lead. They look like they've got it here. They have won it! El Paso! Ah, uh, the winners, girls. Congratulations. Thank you. First ever edition of the War of the Week on this season of the Borderland Blitz, and there is going to be plenty more. In it on the yeah. like when they were doing it, but then as soon as they won, they're like, okay, cool, we're done. Like I like walk off, you know. I was I, like, come on, get excited. I think it was because we had the two-year hiatus, so I think it, it takes a while to get yeah. back into the flow of things. We haven't done it in, in so long. No, I mean, and first time so, I'm in the flow of things. Next week, whoever we're at, yeah, I expect some excitement, some cheers. Some yeah, happiness. let's get some mascots. Yeah. Let's get some more cheerleaders back there. But uh, for the first week back, it's yeah. all good. And shout out to Gadsden because, like I said, one team with disadvantage, they were doing it in boots compared to the joggers. So it was I mean, their come dance on. team. Yeah, their yeah. dance team was so out there. Did. So pretty impressive. Well, coming up, still plenty more to come. We're, we're going to head back over to New Mexico where the Santa Teresa Desert Warriors were hosting the Mayfield Trojans. We're also going to show you some of your Blitz picks from tonight. Again, the $50 Visa gift card on the line for the best photo. We have that coming up. At the Hospitals of Providence East Campus, we are answering the call to care for our rapidly growing community with the completion of a $20 million expansion plan, investing in East El Paso for generations to come. Learn more at thehospitalsofprovidence.com slash East Campus. The tastiest handcrafted pizza made with the freshest ingredients. The newest games, along with some cool classics. The post-game party. Win or lose. They're all made to be shared, like our double up deal. Two large one topping pizzas on dough made from scratch daily, just $24. Peter Piper Pizza, pizza made fresh, families made happy. At Household Furniture, Labor Day is always one of our biggest sales of the year. But now through Labor Day Monday, we're pumping up the volume like never before with up to 50% off store-wide or up to 60 months no interest. Plus rockin' deals you have to see to believe. Like this three-piece sectional for just $19.99 or this six-piece queen bedroom for just $26 a month. Save up to 50% with up to 60 months no interest financing. The Labor Day sale going on now at Household Furniture. At the Hospitals of Providence East Campus, we are answering the call to care for our rapidly growing community with the completion of a $20 million expansion plan, investing in East El Paso for generations to come. Learn more at thehospitalsofprovidence.com slash East Campus.
Yeah, getting it on the megaphone. Yeah, they, right they the loved it out there, I guess, and they wanted to be all about it. Well, welcome back to the Borderland Blitz. We want to go ahead and run down some other scores for you from tonight. Uh, Mountain View hosted the Alpine Bucks. They came to town tonight. And, well, first off, let's go take it back a bit. Let's go to Fabens, where the Fabens Wildcats were hosting the Lobos from Chaparral. As the, you see the final score there, Fabens gets the win. 53-8 to eight was the final. Now let's go to Mountain View, where the Alpine Bucks came to town to take on the Lobos. And big statement win from the Lobos tonight, taking, taking down an out-of-town team as they win 40-13, to 13, the final. But we're going to kick it over to uh, some Santa Teresa football. Yeah, Mayfield was coming off a shutout win against Manzano last week. They were looking to continue their winning ways against the Santa Teresa squad, looking to bounce back after a week one loss. The Desert Warriors hosting the Trojans and things started off close. I think we're back at Riverside. Yeah. Is, I think, we, do we have, do we have the, uh, the Trojans? We, it looks like it's a return here. Like, Oh, there, there we, we go. go. All right. There we go. Now There's we're the Warriors yeah. hosting the Trojans. We're back. We got it. Things started off close. Mayfield QB with the 10-yard pass. It set up a field goal. Let's see how the special teams go. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's three it. points. Stack it on. They got a three-point lead. Santa Teresa, though, weren't going away. The pass off to Angel Hernandez. Here, and he takes it almost 80 yards for the touchdown, wow. beating so through some tacklers as well. Uh, it could be a sweet play, maybe. There's, there's yeah. some busting through, you know. Good play from him. But they take the lead 7-3, but that would actually be the last points they would score all night because Mayfield put the rest of the points on the board. They'd win it 24-7. to Wow, Mayfield 2-0. Good statement win again for Coach Mike Bradley. Meantime, Oregon Mountain was in Deming tonight, taking on the Wildcats. And there you see Oregon Mountain getting their first win of the season after losing last week. They beat Deming 28-7, to the final. Now we're going to go ahead and send it over to back to Jason for our Blitz picks. Again, submit your photos. This is your chance to win a $50 Visa gift card. But uh, Jason's telling me the, we need some photos. <laughs> we do. We really need some photos. And you guys can submit those photos by using the hashtag BlitzPicks. Uh, both on Instagram, Twitter, and you can also submit photos directly through our website at kvia.com slash play. Now today we introduce Blitzy, the newest member of our Blitz crew. He will be appearing at select games that we're covering. And uh, I, I believe he was at some games tonight. Is that correct, Rachel and Adrian? Yeah, he yeah. was at some games. And let me tell you, he was the talk of the town. People already. coming up. Yeah. Our, his debut, and he's already more popular than we are. You still buoy the bear with him. Yeah. There you go. Getting amongst it. I mean, he's got girls all after him. Look at, look at him there. They want him. Come on. It's Blitzy the Bear. Yeah. With the band team. And then the ROTC gentleman yeah. right there. And we honestly didn't even take him up to that many people. People were coming to us. They wanted a photo with Blitzy the Bear. They know how cool he is. Look, come on. I got, I mean, the it, bear on bear. it is just so fitting the first week that you were at the Bowie Bears because it just, it just worked out. We didn't even plan that. Like, that no, truly we didn't. was it, coincidence. It was actually a last minute shift. That yeah. Remember, you were supposed to go to another game, but instead we sent her to Bowie. Everything happens for a reason. So we got to meet his younger brother in Blitzy, and, and everything is good in the world. But yeah, Jason, we definitely need the, the picks, right? This $50 Visa gift card, you can't beat that. That's like a tank of gas right there. Well, yeah, you know, for some people, that's not even a full tank of gas. So yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's yeah. I, gonna, I, I caught myself on that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so once again, you can submit those picks using hashtag BlitzPicks on both Instagram and Twitter. You can also submit them directly to our website at kvia.com slash play. We will choose a winner next week, so please get those yeah. picks submitted. We yeah, we might choose two winners next one. week to make up for it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, two we'll winners. I, yeah, two winners next week. All righty, guys. Well, let's go. We'll have plenty more coming up. We're going to recap the scores for you and also take a look back at some of last night's game that's coming up here on the Borderland Blitz. Okay, this is for par. Your shot. Build your own new Ford with Casa today. Order the exact vehicle you want and get your Ford your way. We'll pay up to $1,000 over Kelly Blue Book for your car. Come and see us at El Paso's only President's Award winner, Casa Ford. Home of the nice guys. Yeah!
Attention, this is a paid advertisement for legal services brought to you by the law offices of Michael J. Gopin. There has been a recall for Philips CPAP and BiPAP machines that may cause cancer when used. If you have developed cancer or any other medical condition from using this machine, call now. Don't wait. You may be entitled to compensation. CPAP machines may also cause airway inflammation, headaches, dizziness, chest pain, sinus infections, and damage to the kidneys, liver, and other organs. If you have been diagnosed with any of these medical conditions, call the law offices of Michael J. Gopin now at 915-532-1111 and you'll be taken care of. Don't wait until 2023 and enroll today at Southwest University. We offer more than 20 associates and bachelor's degrees to start your dream career now. Enroll by September 23rd at Southwest University to become a professional in the nursing, sonography, business, or radiology fields. We offer flexible schedules and short terms. Why wait until next year when you can start at Southwest University now? For more information, visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Last day to enroll is September 23rd. Southwest University makes you happen. All right, let's go ahead and recap the games quickly from last night. The first one takes us over to the sack where America's played host to the Midland Christian Mustangs. In the first half, it was, you know, it was just one of those games, not much offense, perhaps early season jitters, because in the first quarter, the Mustangs were on the move here, but you're going to check out this cool interception by the Trailblazers, Jacob Caravero for America's diving catch with the interception. America's unfortunately loses this one. This game went into double overtime, but all of those, the, those, that, those touchdowns, we're in the second half as America falls by a final score of, well, we'll get the final score in just a bit. Uh, 24 to 16 was the final in that one. Now we move over to Gadsden High where the El Paso Tigers cross state lines to take on the Panthers. First quarter, El Paso in range, but Lorenzo Johnson gonna cough it up right here, but he would make up for it a few plays later as Johnson would get the touchdown to put El Paso on top. El Paso walks away with their first win of the season. Final score in this one was 27 to 20. El Paso gets the win. Let's go ahead and recap the scores from last night real quick. Well, first, let's do sweet play of the week. Obviously, wanted the cupcakes are coming back. Oh, yeah, they're coming yeah. back, and I can't wait. And it's going to be tough for me not to eat some on the way there as well. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll be picking those plays Sunday. We'll have the nominees, and yeah. then you'll be able to vote uh, up until Monday, I believe. Yes, so tune in, yeah. 1035. Sunday night, we'll have old sweet plays for you to choose from. Let's go ahead and recap the scores from week one. There you see Centennial in that battle by 10. Centennial over Franklin, 49 to 21. Midland High over Montwood, 56 to 28. Pebble Hills gets the win over Kenneth Hill in the shutout, 23 to nil. South Lake Carroll all over the Troopers, 66 to 14. Coronado winners over Chapin, 34 to 14. And Lubbock High gets the win over Socorro, 41 to 8. El Dorado getting the win over Parkland, 35 to 27. Andrus beating Eastlake, 27 to 14. Jefferson just getting over Horizon, 21 to 19. Hanks getting the win over Bowie, 40 to 15. East Letter losing out to Riverside, 55 to 42. And Urban getting the win over Bel Air, 56 to 21. Moving on here, you see Fort Stockton winners over Austin, 18 to 16. Del Valle over Burgess, 56 to nil. San Elizario falls to Anthony, 22 to 16. Fabens over Chapadal, 53 to eight. Mountain View winners and Mayfield also winners in the shutout over Santa Teresa. Final scores, these were the ones, the recaps from last night as we showed you earlier, Million Christian over America's 24 to 16, Oregon Mountain over Deming, 28 to seven, El Paso over Gadsden, Hershey over Clan, and Morton over Tornillo. Well, that's gonna do it for week one. It's in the books, there it's it is. It's done, yeah. I can't believe it. It's already, it's been, it's gone. Yeah. And then college football starts tomorrow. Crazy yeah, time. Again, NMSU, UTEP, Pac Sumble, first sellout since 2008. NMSU, we'll probably gonna be the same. I mean, it's gonna yeah. be, you want to be at those games. And if you're not, well, watch us because we'll show the highlights. The football week continues, but for now, we'll see you in week two of the Borderland Blitz. Have a great night, everyone.